In this lesson, we are going to do some 3D machining. The part you see can be opened by expanding the data panel and going into Cam Samples and then into the Tutorials folder. Select 3D Milling Toolpath Overview. Not only does this sample contain a variety of toolpath strategies, it shows them with different options activated. With so many different toolpath strategies available, it's common to wonder which is the best to use. If you can see how a toolpath is applied to a specific part shape, it can help you understand which strategy might work best for your part. It's about understanding the topology of your part and how these toolpaths might fit that topology. Don't be afraid to explore the toolpaths in this sample project. For this lesson, we will be working in the Overview 3D Practice setup. Make sure it is the active setup. This is evident by the dot shown at the end of the setup name. For this lesson, we assume you have been through the introduction to 2D machining. Many of the basics, like creating a setup, defining the stock size, and setting the origin work coordinate system are covered in those lessons. You will also find many similarities on the toolpath strategy dialogues. As with most machining projects, we need to remove the excess material from the raw stock block. This starts with a toolpath roughing strategy. The most efficient way to do this is with the 3D adaptive strategy. Select the Adaptive Strategy from the 3D Toolbar. On the Tool tab, press Select to pick the cutting tool. If you click on the document heading 3D Milling Toolpath Overview, the middle section will show only the tools for this project. Pick tool number 5, the 3 8 Bull Nose End Mill with the 15 thousandths of an inch nose radius, and press Select. For now, we will leave the default speeds and feeds for this tool. Let's go to the Geometry tab. This is where we can contain the toolpath in the X and Y axis cutting plane. As a default, Fusion 360 assumes you want to machine all the rough stock away from around the part model. So, there's nothing to select. However, you can use the machining boundary options to contain the toolpath within a bounding box, by a silhouette of the profile shape, or within a boundary that you select. Read the tooltip for more details. We will come back to this later in the lesson. With stock contour enabled, Fusion 360 will calculate the roughing cuts based on the size of the stock as defined in the setup, unless a different stock selection boundary is selected. That boundary can be selected from the edge of the model or by using sketch geometry. You can also disable stock contour and enable rest machining with the source set to from setup stock and you will achieve similar results. Rest machining is designed to get the remaining stock. Often this is used as a second cut with a smaller tool to get in the smaller crevices of the model. For this example, enable stock contours and disable rest machining. Let's go to the Heights tab. The Heights tab controls the containment of the toolpath in the z-axis. The top height is set to the stock top and the bottom height is set to the model bottom. But we don't need to go any deeper than this flat area here. For the bottom height from pull down, pick Selection and pick any vertex point along that top edge. If you experience any problems picking the point, zoom in, put your cursor over the item you want to select, and hold down the left mouse button until the list of available selections appear. Then select Vertex from the list. Let's go to the Passes tab. The Adaptive Strategy Toolpath Motion is commonly referred to as High Speed Machining. 
High-speed machining, or HSM, involves taking a lighter width of cut, the side cut, a longer depth of cut, and creates a toolpath motion that flows. There are no radical changes in direction on HSM toolpaths. The optimal load parameter controls the side cut amount. This is the maximum step over amount in X and Y. The actual amount per cut will vary, but never exceed this value. Maximum roughing step down is the largest Z step the toolpath will take. Below that is the fine step down, which is actually a fine step up value. If we look at the tooltips for these two parameters, we can see the maximum step down and how the fine step up keeps the toolpath from looking like a giant staircase. By default, the fine step down is 10% of the maximum step down. The stock to leave will leave stock over the part for a finished cut. We will leave these values as they are. Let's go to the linking tab. If you are familiar with the 2D toolpaths, you will find these parameters are similar. For more information on these parameters, review the tooltips or consult the Introduction to 2D Machining training series. We will leave these as they are and press OK. The time required to calculate the toolpath depends on several things. The size of the part, the size of the tool, the step over amount, the speed of your computer, and the tolerances specified on the Passes tab. To make it easier to visualize the completed toolpath, select Show Hide Leads links from the icon group at the bottom of the graphics window and disable links. Right-click over the toolpath operation in the browser and select Simulate. Make your settings the same as shown here and then press Go to End of the Toolpath on the player controls shown at the bottom of the graphics window. This will fast forward to the end of the simulation. You can see most of the stock is removed except for the two cavity areas. This is because for the heights bottom height, we selected this vertex as the bottom for our cut. The cavities are deeper than that selection. If we had selected the bottom of the cavity, the toolpath would have cut the outside of the model to the depth of the cavity, and we don't need to machine the outside area. We will do a separate toolpath to machine the cavities. Close the simulation dialog. In the browser, Right-click over the Adaptive Toolpath and select Duplicate from the list. Right-click on the Duplicate Toolpath and select Edit. On the Geometry tab, pick Stock Selections and then select the boundary that contains the pocket with the flower pattern. And the boundary that contains the curved bottom cavity. On the Heights tab, for the bottom height, use the From pull down and select the model bottom. Since the toolpath will be contained within the selected boundaries and it can't violate the model, it will go as deep as it can to complete the cut. Press OK. Immediately, we can see the toolpath is starting much higher than we might have expected. This is because we didn't define a new top height of where to start the cut. Right-click on the toolpath in the browser and select Edit. On the Heights tab, for the Top Height, use the From pull-down and pick Selection. Then, for the Top Reference, select any vertex at the top of the containment boundary. Again, if you experience any problems picking the point, put your cursor over the item you want to select and hold down the left mouse button until the list of available selections appear. Then select Vertex from the list. Remember the stock to leave from the previous adaptive roughing cut? Well, that stock is on that surface. Set the top height offset to be equal to the value of the stock. 
to avoid any crashes into the remaining stock on the top surface. I'm going to set this to 20 thousandths of an inch. Then press OK again to regenerate the toolpath. Now we can see the toolpath is contained within the XY boundary and the Z height boundary we defined. Before we do any finishing toolpaths, let's clear off this flat horizontal area of the part. From the 3D toolpath toolbar pull down, select Horizontal. On the Tool tab, we should still have the previous tool, number 5, 3 8 bullnose end mill. On the Geometry tab, there is nothing to pick since we wanted to evaluate the entire model in X and Y for flat areas. On the Heights tab, the bottom height is set to the model bottom, but we don't need to go any deeper than this flat area. For the bottom height, from pull down, pick Selection and pick any vertex point along the top edge. We will leave all the other parameters as they are. Press OK to generate the toolpath. We can see it machined the top flat areas of this boss and some other smaller flat areas. If we want to contain it to only do this flat area, we can adjust the top height. Right click on the horizontal toolpath in the browser and select Edit. On the Heights tab, for the top height, use the from pull down and pick selection. Then for the top reference, select any vertex at the top of this fillet. So we are containing the area to evaluate for the toolpath between this narrow range in Z. Press OK to regenerate the toolpath. I recommend you save this part. Since this is a sample part, you can't save it directly you must do a Save As and save it to the project folder of your choice. In this lesson, we learned about the adaptive toolpath for roughing, containment boundaries for X and Y, height controls in Z, stepovers, and step downs.